Hello, this is Matt Critcher, Vice President of Student Services, and I'm here to go over the standard 3A for our accreditation ICER uh, committee process analysis and evaluation. So I was really uh, honored to be part of uh, an outstanding committee group of individuals and leaders, uh, everything from Teresa Pedrosa, Student Senate President, to Kay Metcalf, classified professional uh, and senator and SEIU leader, uh, faculty from sociology, counseling, and physics astronomy, including Mona Abdoon, Sadie Ashraf, and Scott Hildreth, as well as our experts in human resources, uh, Jennifer Drewley, HR manager, and Wyman Fong, vice chancellor of human resources. 3A covered human resources in three or four main areas. And the main areas have to do with uh, assuring the integrity and quality of our programs and services by employing all the different constituents of employees uh, with the appropriate education training and experience to provide the quality support for our programs and services. And the second main body of this uh, standard 3A was around uh, that our criteria and qualifications uh, selection of personnel is all a transparent and publicly stated process to address the needs of our students and that it reflects the job descriptions, our mission, and our um, values and vision as a college and as a district. And then thirdly, um, that through our pr principles and our practices, that we maintain appropriate programs that support a diverse personnel to serve the diverse community in which our community uh, comprises. And then we regularly assess uh, and evaluate uh, not only our personnel, but our, our ways in which we bring personnel into our community. In terms of uh, the evidence of meeting the standards, we began with collecting all the different evidence toward the 14 uh, subsections within standard 3A. Uh, then we began our analysis. Are there any gaps? Uh, how are we doing? What's our continuous improvement? Uh, and then what was ultimately our evaluation of each of these 14 subsections within standard 3A? And uh, again, they were kind of grouped, if you will, uh, with attention to each category of employee uh, around um, how we uh, recruit and employ and um, select individuals to work in our community uh, in terms of their uh, qualifications and job descriptions, the evaluation processes, professional development, which we'll briefly highlight um, uh, the CLIP, the Classified Leadership Institute program and also some developments on our Equal Employment Opportunity Plan that I think really make Chabot College and CLP, CCD shine in terms of um, you know, being a leader in the field for uh, student equity and uh, diversity and inclusion, and including our own uh, really Chabot College initiated uh, diversity and equity statement on every job description that goes out. And that's what I wanted to share through a collaborative process of faculty administrators, classified professionals, and then working with HR, uh, we developed this position statement, if you will, uh, that Chabot College is committed to educational equity and its academic programs and college services so that students may achieve their personal educational and career goals. And our equity work builds, uh, today builds upon a strong history. Puente and Amoja learning communities now models have been replicated across the state and they were created at Chabot College. These programs have paved the way for a series of additional uh, educational student support programs intentionally focused on equity that thrive at Chabot College today. And that in fact, we're the third most diverse city in the nation um, and in California, I think it's the, maybe it's the fifth. Um, and we serve a highly diverse student population are proud to be designated as an HSI and MSI as well, minority serving institution in Anapesi College. And that the information about our demographics can be found here because we hope the applicants will truly um, look at who uh, our, our community is, is made up of, and that's a very diverse community. And uh, requires a culture responsive approach that recognizes the myriad strengths and assets that our students bring to the community. And we do so by promoting a classroom and co-curricular learning environment that is inclusive, collaborative, engaging, and challenging with respect and dignity and integrity are being core values. And we see students as producers of knowledge, not just consumers of knowledge. And we work to reframe inequities as a problem of practice and do the elimination of equities as an individual uh, and institutional uh, responsibility. And then we be even more specific on job announcements as to seeking equity-minded applicants who demonstrate to understand the benefits of diversity it brings to the educational community and who accept their shared role, demonstrate cultural competence, dedicated to issues of social justice, and so on. And then briefly, just wanted to highlight the uh, classified 
Leadership Institute program started about seven years ago. I think we have six graduating classes now. And the mission of the CLIP program that's been district-wide uh, is to empower classified professionals to the implementation of programs focused on providing professional skills, educational knowledge, and personal growth that supports the goals of our educational community. So we encourage everyone to uh, read through all of the standards, of course, and uh, uh, any feedback through the shared governance process this fall to the standard 3A committee. And so we can do our best to include that feedback and uh, really represent Chabot for the wonderful institution that it is made up of all of you and our students community. Thank you very much. Standard 3B brings us into the world of physical resources here at Chabot College. Special thank you to all of the committee members of 3B for the hard work, time, and effort that you put in to make this standard come together. While there are many areas of focus within the standard, one of the main points deals specifically with our capital improvement program. Through the allocation of funds for Measure B and Measure A, the college has and continues to improve physical resources. Through our shared governance and facilities planning committees, campus priorities for capital improvements, technology enhancements, and sustainability goals for the campus are discussed and implemented. As we can see, projects from the facilities master plan have come to life on our campus, and planning for future projects continues as we prepare to offer new learning areas and experiences for all of our students. As we look at improvements to campus safety and security, we can see a number of things that are currently being worked on and have already been completed. Safety continues to be an important focus in the district and on the campus as shown in the evidence found within the standard. Special shout out to Chabot Campus Safety and our m and crew for all of the work that you've done on your end to provide a safe and secure campus. Standard 3C, Technology Resources. The Committee for Technology Resources Standard 3C was composed of Nathaniel Rice, Mumtaj Ismail, Morgan Butler, Sarah Woods, Christy Davis, Manny Kang, Thomas Dowry, and Bruce Griffin. The main points of Standard 3C are that technology planning is integrated through the following four shared governance processes. These are the Instructional Services Technology Committee, IST, the District Technology Coordinating Committee, TCC, the Program and Area Review, PAR, and the Planning and Resource Allocation Committee, PRAC. The college and district are currently in the process of updating their technology plans, which will address the upcoming five years of projected technology needs. Some of the key processes discovered regarding improvements to campus technology include the creation of an isolated network for sensitive data, the implementation of a role-based account system, the expansion of wireless connectivity both indoors and out, which included over 400 upgraded Wi-Fi access points installed across the campus, as well as a distributed antenna system, a DAS, to improve indoor cellular accessibility. Also, there is the installation of a Cisco Firepower Next Generation Firewall and the migration to Sophos Advanced Threat Protection. Finally, there is also the launch of a web-based district managed technology help desk, which improved turnaround time for help tickets and made assistance accessible even during email outages. As far as trainings for staff and students, for students, there is the online student support services, and there is also the creation of the resource hub within Canvas, which brings many tools together for student access. For faculty, the tool, there are tools for teaching online, and there is the designation of faculty mentors, especially with the conversion to Canvas, and the appointment of a dedicated instructional technology specialist. For staff, there were numerous flex day training sessions covering a variety of technical uh, skills and trainings, as well as the Vision Resource Center. Chabot College has policies and procedures in place that guide the appropriate use of technology in the educational process. These include BP 3720, which covers computer and network use, AP BP 5500 for student conduct and due process, and AP 6365 for accessibility of information technology. These policies and procedures affirm the college's commitment to safeguarding students, 
faculty, and staff, while also directing the appropriate use of technology. Hello, Dale Wagner here, your Vice President of Administrative Services to talk about 3D financial resources and how the college meets the standard. So first of all, financial planning is integrated through all of the college's strategic planning and shared governance processes. All stakeholders are involved at all levels at the, uh, in all committees for the allocation of resources to programs and to ensure that uh, student need is met. Uh, on this list is our, uh, our whole uh, alphabet soup of um, committees, shared governance committees, again, all represented across the, um, the shared governance milieu here at the, the college, except for uh, CEMC, which is predominantly um, faculty and management relative to um, its place as a, um, as a collective bargaining uh, committee. But all of these involve resources and resource allocation, PRAC, PBC, PAR, SASE, PDEV, IST, BIT, CE, and CEMC. Probably the most important aspect of our current uh, 3D activity is a, a reconstruction of the budget allocation model. It's currently undergoing revision through our shared governance processes. This involves both um, uh, colleges and uh, the district at large. Um, the need to uh, uh, reconfigure the budget allocation model is as a result of the new state student-centered funding formula. Uh, ideally, at the end of this process, we will have a budget allocation model that will be directly aligned with how the college, uh, well, how the district and vis-a-vis -vis the college receive funds from the state through the SCIF. This is a process that's been ongoing for over a year. We hope to finish by the end of this year. Uh, we have the, the bones or the skeleton of, the, of, a, of a possible model already in place. Uh, just a lot of, uh, quote, fleshing out the, um, the uh, specifics on uh, how we're going to uh, allocate all resources through, through the model. Uh, second most important piece relative to um, student success and meeting uh, success goals, uh, the vision for su success goals from the state of California is our Measure A bond monies. Measure A passed by the voters of Alameda County uh, allows us to uh, both build out facilities at the campus and to uh, purchase necessary equipment for uh, our programs to ensure student success. Uh, measure A bond dollars are evaluated in the shared governance process, and I'll have a little bit more about how that uh, occurs later on in the slide uh, presentation. Um, it's important to note that we have a district budget development process. It works on the fiscal year cycle, and Chabot College adheres to uh, budget protocols, both uh, internally at the college and externally with the district to ensure that we meet all budget deadlines as required uh, by the state and by board policy. So an important piece of um, our shared governance process and the allocation of resources is the sharing of financial information across the college. Uh, this is done in multiple venues. It's done by uh, predominantly through PRAC but it's also done in leadership areas as, such as the President's Council, which is uh, the leadership group of all constituents uh, across the college. Uh, predominantly, my office prepares in, uh, financial information uh, in regards to where the college is, both from um, its, our position at the college, our position within the district, and any state allocations that we're receiving. Uh, information is shared uh, usually by me at town halls, in the President's Council, at PRAC where I'm a, a tri-chair, uh, and anything that may affect facilities is shared at FIT where I'm a, tri a tri-chair. So um, financial information uh, is, is prepared and, and shared across um, the college in multiple venues, also at convocation and flex days as noted here on the slide. So financial uh, information is transparent and shared across the college to ensure that, um, again, 
programs and student success uh, metrics are, are met. PRAC and PAR uh, are involved predominantly as the major two driving committees for PRAC for the allocation of resources, PAR for planning, uh, planning and review to ensure that, that um, we have a, a baseline for how we allocate uh, dollars across the college. Um, again, shared governance committees uh, represented by constituents uh, of all leadership groups. And um, the PRAC has also been um, implicitly involved in um, all integrated planning that has a bit occurred across the campus. Uh, in regards to financial planning, uh, the mission ed master plan, uh, facilities master plan, strategic plan, uh, and then planning all the way down uh, to the program level through the program and area review process. So PRAC is our, um, our pr predominant committee for uh, allocating resources across the campus. College President's Planning Initiatives for Fiscal Year 2021, Hotlink uh, is listed there. Um, the key piece uh, here is that uh, the planning initiatives set forth by the President uh, come uh, up from constituent groups uh, through PRAC, through PAR, through other shared governance committees vetted in the President's Council. Uh, again, where um, leadership is uh, of all constituents groups. Uh, this leads the president to uh, be able to put together her, um, her planning initi initiatives for the year. And all of these are based on uh, guidelines, uh, the, the vision for success goals um, and standards set forth by um, uh, ACCJC. Here's our college resource allocation model. Um, developed by a subcommittee of PRAC, called it CRAM, right? Have to have a good um, acronym. Um, this is a base allocation model for um, predominantly our, our 4,000 level supplies and our 6,000 level uh, equipment and how we are allocating uh, supplies and equipment across the college based on uh, predominantly the supplies coming from our lottery allocation, which is a state fund, and our Measure A bond allocation, which again was uh, approved by the voters and how we are predominantly doing much of our um, equipment funding at the college uh, for the present time. Um, this process was um, vetted through PRAC, again, shared governance committee that includes all constituent groups. Uh, also vetted through uh, leadership of uh, administrative leadership of, of the deans of all the uh, academic areas, uh, who again, predominantly the academic areas are the, the areas that predominantly used a lottery because they're instructional equipment, um, uh, instructional uh, supplies, and uh, our measure a bond allocation, um, which is predominantly, again, instructional supplies. So this was vetted through uh, leadership, uh, administrative leadership through the deans, through shared government leadership, through con constituent groups, vetted to PRAC, uh, set forth to the college president and um, approved as our predominant source of resource allocation uh, in the 4,000 supply area and 6,000 um, equipment area. Those are for those numbers, by the way, are um, again, state numbers for uh, allocation of, um, of um, uh, resources across the, um, used across the state. Lastly, we have our, um, our planning in a uh, calendar. Uh, we, we plan on a fiscal year starting in July, uh, ending in June, starting with uh, the allocation of budgets, the loading of budgets, the, the um, evaluation of needs uh, through uh, the program in area review process that occurs a little bit later on as we after we set the budgets up um, allocation of those resources evaluation of restricted and unrestricted funds whether or not we're going to have a shortfall or excess um, we ideally if all goes well we allocate resources out we make purchases across the year um, then we evaluate what um, has occurred and um, budget development begins all over again 
and we start the process uh, that ends in June. We start it again in July, and that is uh, 3D financial uh, resources and uh, how the college is meeting the standards is set forth by ACCJC and how we support uh, programs and services at the college. Thanks.